legal system, a man was sentenced to 30 years in prison for causing a death while using his cell phone behind the wheel. Gregory Andriotis was speeding and thumbing through apps on his smartphone when he slammed into the back of a family's vehicle, killing a nine-year-old Riverview boy. That was seven years ago, and tonight the boy's parents finally got justice. Fox 13's Chris Cato is in our newsroom tonight, and Chris, the boy's parents asked the judge for the maximum sentence, and he delivered it today. He did, Allie. You know, Jordan and Brooke Shearer wanted the court to send the message that Florida takes distracted driving very seriously in hopes that this case will make drivers think twice before messing with their phones behind the wheel, and in doing so, will spare other families from the pain they've had to live with since September 2016. That's when their family road trip on I-75 turned tragic. Their SUV was sitting in traffic near Brooksville when a car driven by Gregory Andriotis slammed into the back of it. You see that image here. Prosecutors say Andriotis was going 86 miles an hour while surfing the web, downloading apps, and even paying bills on his smartphone. The impact of the crash killed nine-year-old Logan and severely injured his sister and parents. This spring, Andriotis was found guilty of vehicular homicide and reckless driving with serious bodily injury, the first such conviction under Florida's new distracted driving law. During his sentencing today, Andriotis apologized to the Shearers, saying he's deeply and truly sorry for causing the accident that took their son from them. I haven't lost a child, so I can't possibly imagine the pain that this has caused you and your family. I wish more than anything that I could change what happened that day. I would gladly trade places with him if it meant he, get, he got to live. He then begged the court for mercy, saying that going to prison for a long time would ruin the lives of his children. He has two kids and a wife who also testified, asking the judge for a lighter sentence than the 30-year maximum sought by prosecutors. During a recess before the sentencing, the victim's parents explained why they were pushing for the maximum. I carry a lot of sympathy for Mr. Andriotis, and I carry a lot of sympathy for his family, and I carry a tremendous amount of sympathy for his children. That's what tugs at my heartstrings the most. But at the end of the day, I've had to be reminded, and I have to remind myself, well, we go home every day without our child. There is nothing that will ever bring Logan back. But what about the next Logan, and the next Logan, and the next Logan? What happens if we don't stand in here and try to prevent other Logans and other Shearer from facing the same fate. After their son's death, the Shearers worked tirelessly to strengthen Florida's distracted driving law. In fact, their lobbying efforts led to the passage of the law that Andriotis was convicted under. And they've carried those efforts to other states, pressing legislators there to create laws that seriously penalize distracted driving crashes that cause death or serious injury. And again, tonight, just a couple of hours ago, the judge in Hernando County gave Andriotis the maximum sentence, 30 years in prison. That's 15 years for vehicular homicide and five years for each of the three counts of reckless driving with serious bodily injury. He's also ordered to pay the shearers over $100,000 in restitution. Allie? Yeah, and I'm sure this case will set precedent. All right, Chris Cato on our newsroom tonight. Chris, thank you.